Hi, I'm Jeff, and welcome to another one of my videos where I take a look at all the new comic books coming out on either May 24th or 25th, 2022. And I ask myself the question, what one new comic book would I buy this week if I could buy just one book? Let's jump right into the content of this video. First, by taking a look at my pick from two weeks ago, which was Grimm, issue number one. And the question remains, was it a worthy and worthwhile pick to be my just one book pick of the week? And the answer is yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was. It was good. It was entertaining. I enjoyed it. Um, I can really tell that we're just at the tip of the iceberg. I mean, it's it's a comic book, so it's limited in the amount of information that it can give you in one single issue, and it's the first issue. So basically, all we're doing is we're setting up who the people are, uh, what the premise is, and what basically the kind of overarching conflict is. And those things are interesting. Those things I was like, oh, okay, I could see that being interesting. Um, but I could also see it being a bit lacking. And I think that that is once again a liability of just the limited amount of information that you can put into an issue number one. So I'm compelled to continue to read it. Um, I'm going to stick with it for at least another two issues, and we'll see what is the series really going to be. And, and that won't become clear at least until issue number three. Often I stick with a book that I'm really interested in at least till issue number five, because that's when it really finds its rhythm and really finds its stride and tells me if it's a book I want to continue to read long term. But right now, I'm cautiously optimistic about Grimm, um, and so I'm gonna stick with it, and I think it was a legitimate just one book pick for two weeks ago. If you read Grimm, let me know down in the comments what you thought about it. Are you gonna keep reading it? Did you like it? What was your favorite thing about it? Let me know any thoughts you might have down in the comments. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the books that are coming out this upcoming week. I'm going to give you my three honorable mentions, and then I will give you my just one book pick for the week. But first, let me tell you about some of the books that I am pulling this week that I am not going to be mentioning specifically um, in my honorable mentions or pick of the week. There are two books from Chip Zdarsky that are coming out this week. Chip Zdarsky I like a lot. The first one is New Burn, issue number seven. Uh, New Burn is an interesting story that I've been enjoying, um, and I really like Chip Zdarsky, so I'm sticking with that. Stillwater, issue number 13, is coming out this week. Stillwater took a little bit of a break there for a few months, and now is coming back. Stillwater is a world from Chip Zdarsky that I think is pretty cool and um it, i've enjoyed stillwater a lot more than i initially expected so i'm sticking with stillwater uh in addition um saga issue number 59 comes out this week saga is something that I'm enjoying a lot more than I would have anticipated. Um, apparently, I am in the majority because Saga is like the biggest comic book out there. Um, so I'm glad to be reading Saga and I'm enjoying that a lot. And then finally, of the books that I'm just featuring in my what I'm pulling this week section, Hulk issue number seven from Donny Cates is coming out this week. Um, I have not, I'm way behind on my comic book reading, so I haven't read any of the. Um, um, uh, what is it? The Banner of War, um, uh, or Banner of Thunder. What is it called? I don't know what it's called. But anyways, I haven't read this little special event between Hulk and, and Thor. I haven't been reading any of it, so I don't know how good or how entertaining it's been. I did catch a spoiler about this issue number seven. There is something in there that people might consider spec worthy. It's at the very least pretty cool. So this is a book that you might want to kind of sort of mm, maybe keep your ear out for it. If you decide that it's interesting or exciting for you, you might want to pick up uh, a cover, one copy of this if you can get it at cover price. All right, let's go ahead and move forward with my honorable mentions. Uh, my first honorable mention for this week is a new book called Legion of X, issue number one from Marvel Comics. Here's the description. Sp Cy Spurrier and Jan 
Bazaldua, bring peace, love, and justice to Krakoa. Krakoa has its laws, but does it have justice? To remain a mutant sanctuary, Krakoa must safeguard itself against those who would damage its peace or traumatize its people. The lost must be found, and the wicked must face redemption or retribution. It's up to the ever soulful swashbuckler, Nightcrawler, to keep the spark alive, and Legion to host this unique team in the psychedelic mind space called The Altar. With Pixie on point, Juggernaut as one-man riot squad, and a host of X favorites on the beat, the Legion of X will do anything to protect mutants' rights to pursue happiness and hope. Kicking off a hunt for a missing Iraqi god and a skinjacker possessing innocent mutants, read this issue and come meet weaponless Zen, Aura Serata, and a villain worth praying for. The destiny of X bears its heart and soul right here. Okay. So when I first read the description of this book, I was kind of like, ah, you know, I really like Nightcrawler, and I really like Legion, and it I, this sounds like an interesting team. I mean, you got Juggernaut on the team. That's pretty cool. And I like the X-Men so much. This, this sounds like it should be firing on all cylinders for me. But then I was kind of like, oh, I'm so just, I feel like I'm just getting constantly burned by X titles that I, I pick up an X title hoping that it's going to be the next title that's, that's really going to get me enthusiastic about the X-Men again because I'm a big X-Men fan and all of them keep letting me down. And from the description, I, I, I kind of expect this one to do the same and I, I almost didn't mention it this week. Um, but then something came to my attention and I was like, well, I have to at least mention it as an honorable mention. And that is first appearances. There are a handful of first appearances in here. According to Key Collector, it says uh, first team appearance of the Legion of X, Juggernaut, Nightcrawler, Pixie. Um, first appearance of Weaponless Zen. First appearance of Aura Serata. First appearance of Mother Righteous and first appearance of an Iraqi god referred to as a skinjacker. So you have multiple first appearances in the world of the X-Men. There are already so many characters in the world of the X-Men. Um, it's actually a little bit surprising that they're bothering to give us first appearances of new mutants, but um, here, here they are. And with the mutants, you know, coming into the MCU, with mutants as a group, not going anywhere in Marvel Comics or in any other medium. Um, new characters in the mutants world are at least worth paying attention to. So I think I'm going to pick up a copy of this because once again, I'm an X-Men fan. I do like these characters. I do want to find a title that really gets me excited about the X-Men again. And there are first appearances in this book. So these are all reasons why I wasn't going to pick up this book, but I, I do think I'm going to go ahead and pick up a copy of this this week. All right. The next honorable mention that I have for you is a new book. It's called Fox and Hare, issue number one from Vault Comics. Here's the description. When black market coder Aurora Yi uncovers top secret data that has tapped into the lives of the citizens of Mazu Bay. Her world is turned upside down. The mega corporations, the mega corporation Sinastri Designs, wants its data back and is hot on her trail. Aurora has no choice but to turn to the fox and the hare, the most feared mercenaries in the city, for protection. Okay. So uh, I believe these are new characters. I'm not familiar with them, and I didn't find any information that they have appeared uh, in comic books before. So we have new characters. These are our first appearance. That's a reason to make it noteworthy enough right there. Uh, it sounds like it could be interesting. The art of these covers looks pretty cool. So um, that's another thing that looks pretty interesting. You know, it's an indie number one. I, wow, I don't think I've said this a, for a while in any of these videos. I used to say it all the time. But 
It's an indie number one. It might be worth it just to buy, just to read, just to check out what new characters are out there. If you love it, if you really like the premise, if you really like the characters, maybe give it to three or five issues or even beyond. And if you don't like it, you just have that issue number one. You just file it away into your collection. And maybe, who knows, someday, maybe it will become a, it's five dollars this book, a five dollar lottery ticket that pays off so if you, this is a thin week for you and you want to try something brand new and indie uh, this might be the one to check out this week okay my next honorable mention is something is killing the children issue number 23 from boom studios here's the description Trapped in the county jail, Erica must use her one phone call to contact someone from her past. But will they come to her aid? Escape may come from a most unexpected place, but with it, the revelation of a terrifying new threat that will push Erica to her limits. Okay, so those of you who watch my videos every single week, basically, Something is Killed the Children is going to at least be an honorable mention every week because I love it. I think it's fantastic. Uh, it's my favorite comic book that's being published right now. Uh, and James Titan IV and Werther de la Dera's work on it is phenomenal. And this new story arc, of which this is the third issue, is pretty cool. Um, we're getting new monsters. We're getting new characters. Um, there's a lot of new and cool things that are being presented in this story arc that I'm really looking forward to seeing how they play out. And I even heard James Tynion IV, he was at Megacon over this past weekend, and I heard him talking to somebody and he was basically saying um, that there's a lot of new characters and a lot of new ideas that he's introducing with this new story arc. So you never know, like issue number 21 had first appearances, issue uh, I think of significance. Issue number two had first appearance, I think also of certain significance. So you never know uh, if that is going to continue. And I think that uh, first appearances, not only in House of Slaughter, uh, issue number six that I mentioned last week, but of course also in Something is Killing the Children, first appearances are worth kind of having uh, in your collection. So ultimately, Something is Killing the Children is a reader pick for me. I love it so much. I would be reading it and enjoying it and loving it, even if it had zero spec potential. But that being said, I think it has way more than zero spec potential. So if you are a reader with a mind to uh, collectability, which I am as well, uh, then I would definitely suggest considering at the very least picking up Something is Killing the Children, issue number 23. And if you haven't ever read Something is Killing the Children, you could totally go back and find issue number 21 and 22 and jump on with this story arc. I don't think you're gonna be too lost and I still think you're gonna enjoy it. So it's not too late to jump on Something is Killing the Children if you haven't already. Okay, that's my honorable mentions for this week. That leaves me with the one book that I would buy if I could buy just one book this week, and that book is The Department of Truth, issue number 18 from Image Comics. Here's the description. New story arc. Co-creator Martin Simmons returns for the explosive new arc of the Eisner-nominated hit. For decades, the Department of Truth battled a secret war against its Soviet counterpart, the Ministry of Lies. Now, Cole Turner will have to face the consequences of his predecessors as the dark actions of the past unfurl before him. Okay, so um, one thing I want to mention that this description just reminded me of about Department of Truth being a, a Eisner um, nominated um, hit. Um, the Eisner nominations came out just this past week and Department of Truth is up uh, for again for, uh, for best continuing, best ongoing series. 
as well as Something is Killing the Children was also nominated in the same category for Best Ongoing Series. In addition, James Tynan IV was nominated again for Best Writer. So it's good to know that um, not only am I a fan of these books, but people who give awards for comic books uh, continue to be fans of uh, the Department of Truth, of Something is Killing the Children, of James Tynan IV, of Wind, which got a, an Eisner nomination. So uh, there's a lot of good stuff um, in from the critics and from the awards people towards this title, James Tynan IV, and other things. Okay, back to the point of this one. This is a new story arc. What Department of Truth has been doing is they basically have a, what we'll call a present day story, and then they'll break it up with kind of like in the past stories. Um, these books take Martin Simmons extra time to uh, do the art for. So sometimes he needs little breaks in order to get caught up with the main storyline, which is his focus. So this is a return to the main present storyline and I think that that is where the the Department of Truth sign, uh, shines the brightest is in the current storyline. Now I will admit it appears that people are um, that that are waning on the Department of Truth a little bit. Collectability and value of this book on the secondary market has kind of dropped. It's stabilized but it's pretty much as low as I imagined it will be. Now, that, for my opinion, that provides an excellent buying opportunity to pick up um, back issues of the Department of Truth because I definitely think there is a future there. And I think part of the reason that people are, um, you know, waning on it is because we had all this news about it being optioned and then it's been dead silence and out of sight, out of mind. If you're not talking about it from a spec potential, people aren't really checking it out. In addition, this is a book that people are, I think, are either going to love or they're going to hate. There are sections in this book sometimes, not necessarily this issue, but in the title, that are just solid text. And for some people, they don't like that in their comic books. They want like 50-50 art text or maybe even more art than text. Um, but, and, and sometimes the reading of the Department of Truth is very dense. It's very heady concepts and sometimes I have to reread sections so I can fully absorb the concepts that are being brought to me. But that is part of what I love about the Department of Truth. It challenged me it challenges me to think. And not only does it challenge me to think, it challenges me to feel because the issues are complex. The bad guys are are uh, seemingly bad, but the good guys are not completely good. It's just a really really great title and I'm really super excited to get back to the main storyline, the present day storyline. So that excitement uh, for me for this title and for the return to the main storyline makes it the book that I'm most excited about reading this week and therefore makes it my just one book pick. All right, so that's my video this week. If you didn't already see it, please check out the um, the video that I uploaded earlier this week. It's a test your comic book grading skills video, but more it's just me unboxing a 9-8 pre-screen and going over the books that got rejected. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put the card for it right up here. I know it's a half hour, I know it's a bit long, um, but I want you to see my experience of opening this box in real time. And I think there's some cool information in there, so I recommend you check it out. If you like this video, likes are appreciated by me. If you haven't already subscribed, I invite you to do so and hit that notification bell so you don't miss things like my video that I put out earlier this week. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.